In the museum without proprietor, we found th 14 dead cockroaches, a knife blood coloured with old jam, a jar of silt kept from the flood of 1926. Beneath the fox's head that leered down from one wall, there was a letter covered by a wig, a leather dog collar, a photograph of us, aged 10. We didn't recognise the house, its slant roof almost Scandinavian, a bone white Daimler on the drive. But that was your face, that was mine. We wore blue dungarees, our eyes were narrowed by the sun. The trees looked like the trees that line the roadside here in this forgotten corner of Vermont. You grabbed my arm. An engine broke the silence of the afternoon. If I could, I'd remember your breathing, the crickets whispering, the white car drawing up outside. Admit you feel like all the ice skates in Brazil, left over from a trade agreement in the 19th century, and surely still upended in a locked room somewhere, blades turned skyward, laces all untied. Outside, it's 32 degrees. Disuse has made them elegant. They've never sluiced a diagram across a frozen lake. No one has drowned in them. They've never held the slim feet of a lady in a sable coat. At night, their sharpened edges make strange arrows on the wall. Imagine how they'd pinch the skin, how neat they are, how many, how they'd cut if they could. At the height of illness, Piranesi sketched imaginary prison cells, the soaring horse, the pier with chains. His hands moved with a fury so exact it seemed his fever was condensing on the page. The man caught in the rack, his one wild eye. The giant wheel, a ferris turning on an absent hinge. And others, more innocuous. Staircase with trophies, rounded tower. Inviting us to peer in close and note the claustrophobic lines. Each walkway leading back towards a darker focal point where we might watch our own unlikely dungeons form. I looked in, found the maze of ponds, the room of infinite white tabletops, the prison of a thousand coat hangers where all thoughts are triangular, until a small brick house appeared and I squinted through its windows, saw at length a room in sunlight where a man, much like my father, sat transfixed by nothing but the spin and judder of the washing machine, chainless, free, unable to get up. I'd like to find it, leather-bound, unlikely in the small-town library, somewhere between Abs and Ashbury, Pages curling like a song. On Glasgow rain, a kiss for Marilyn. The hidden life of honeybees. A hundred titles that I'd seen in old anthologies. Wondered at the hand behind them. Said that word aloud. Anon, anon. The sound a kind of lullaby. I'll say a prayer in praise of dear Anonymous. His old familiar anti-signature the simple courage of that nameless mark, a prayer that each of us might trust our words so well we'd spend a lifetime on the vessel of a single verse, proofing our lines only to part with them, untie them from the mooring of our names. Seeing the cart and quartz white mare from the window you open to the street, I want the things that other people don't. Tortoise shell glasses someone must have died in once. A boa's glossy soddenness. The china mug cracked with a final argument. 
I want to climb into the knackered stronghold of a fridge, no longer cool. Or lie beside you on a mattress moulded by somebody else's bones. Drift down the city road and lay a claim on every disused shop. The out of favour trees still reaching up to hold the leaves they had. Come back. We'll take the slim, once wanted moon. Unfashionable blackboard sky. No one will miss the world tonight. Let's leg it with the lot. The piano, that was easiest, despite the keys rattling like dice beneath the lid. So next, I strapped a toffee-coloured horse across my back, ferried my grandma's coffin with her still inside, pitching from left to right with every pace. I took a statue of Napoleon and left it on the pony track, a kind of shrine, and goaded later in the pub, I dragged the whole place up with me. Stopped to pull a pint beneath the summit cairn. By then, the town was just a skeleton, the mountain curtsying with weight, which just left you. I draped your arms around my neck. Light as you are, I couldn't take you with me, not a step. While you weren't listening, I heard the glass say to the tabletop, I like the way you hold me. I heard the table answer back. I like the way you feel. The bar stools thanked the floor for all the nights it propped them up. Although I didn't catch the floor's reply, it sounded delicate. And I wondered what the wind says to the trees outside to make them swoon like that. And what it tells the grass to set it shivering. Or what it is that's spoken when you press that bottle to your lips? What passes there between you in that silent and repeated kiss that seems to say, I'm here, I'm listening? Thank you. We recognise the value of human remains. It is well known that there can be no ownership of human remains, only custody. We feel it is the right of everyone to feel a connection to the people who lived here before them. We recognise a society that cares for the dead, demonstrates that it values life. We have extended the definition of human remains to cover whole or part skeletons, individual bones or fragments of bones, teeth, ashes, soft tissue including organs and skin, blood, hair, embryos, slide preparations of human tissue. We also consider human remains to include any of the above which have been modified in some way by human skill and or which may be physically bound up with other non-human materials. We will not display and interpret casts of human remains in ways which would be inappropriate for non-cast human remains. All acquisitions of human remains will be made with reference to our acquisition and disposal policy. Regarding all incoming loans of human remains for display, the content, interpretation and marketing of the exhibition will be discussed by the exhibition proposer and us, the Human Remains Panel. My little girl isn't sick, not even slightly 
just luckily sitting in the trolley holding out her arms. So again we have. I choose the things from the supermarket shelves, pass them to her and she turns behind her and drops them into the trolley. It's a game we play, just me and her. I call it the very careful shopper. She knows to be gentle with the eggs. There are other babies here in trolleys or strapped to their parents in carriers. See that boy, the one standing in front of the cakes? See what a terrible case of eczema he's got. It's hard not to stare, isn't it? And there's another one, a stringy-haired girl struggling to hold a net of oranges because of that cast on her arm. I notice sick children. I record the signs. Hedrin lice detection comb. Once a week, take a peek. Clinically tested for accuracy and comfort. Precision engineered for optimum performance. Head lice vary in size from a full stop to a sesame seed. The Hedrin head lice detection comb has been especially designed for detecting lice. It has been clinically tested and is designed to ensure that it is accurate and comfortable to use. The comb is made from tough butadine styrene and the teeth are precision engineered so that they will trap the lice and not bend in use. I should have said before I started that significant portions of this story um, have been nicked from the Tesco.com website. <laughs> the, the doctor says my daughter is not sick, perhaps she's a touch overweight and yes she's got less hair than most other children her age but nothing other than that. I've had her tested for everything, everything. She's never had a stomach upset. She's never even tumbled and scraped her knee. I have been so careful to keep her perfect, to sterilise everything that touches her. Milton Maximum Protection Sterilising Tablets. Maximum Protection, ideal when out, effective on germs. Sterilises in 15 minutes. Used to confidently disinfect breastfeeding equipment. Weird, isn't it? and baby utensils, bottles, soothers, teething rings, weaning items, etc. Fast, disinfects in 15 minutes, handy. At home or on the move, safe, no need to rinse, effective, kills germs including bacteria, fungi and viruses, kills listeria, salmonella, fungicidal on candida, albicans, thrush. Started soon after she was born, I'd be warming milk or hand washing her vests, and in my mind I'd hear the screech of brakes, the tinkle of shattered glass. I'd have to check she was still in her cot. Or I'd be holding her at the top of the stairs and I'd see myself letting go of her, watching her skull shatter against the skirting boards. I'd be lying in bed at night, counting her breaths, knowing that the second I'd fall asleep, they'd stop. Once we got through the SIDS danger period without incident, I managed to sleep a little better, but a dream of the cells in her blood turning black, her hair rubbing off on the pillow, the cord of her dressing gown wrapping itself around her neck. In the night, she shouldn't be out here. I wanted to gather her up and wind her back into my body like a dropped spool of thread. Domestos spray bleach, 500 millilitres. Domestos bleach cleaning spray gives you maximum control to target and leave surfaces brilliantly and hygienically clean. Safe to use on stainless steel, enamel, ceramic, porcelain, plastic, painted wood. I stopped sleeping so I wouldn't dream, so I could be more vigilant. There are dangers everywhere. The cord of the blind in her bedroom. A loose bit of carpet at the top of the stairs. We'd go out to get away from the risks, but bus rides meant infections, measles, meningitis, pneumonia. We'd play in the garden, but next door's dog might break through the fence and savage her. A slate might blow off the roof. A walk in the pram. 
What about a driver having a heart attack at the wheel of a car mounting the curb? The doctor prescribed something to settle my mind. He said the pills would help me filter those kind of thoughts out. He said he wouldn't refer her for any more x-rays. He told me to take a rest, to go on little walks, to build up to everyday life gradually. He suggested a trip to the supermarket. The supermarket is just a converted old warehouse, really, with a high roof, lots of exposed pipes and girders. There's a helium balloon up there, a pigeon perched on a metal overhang. There are cardboard signs advertising special offers and bog-off deals suspended from pipes. They move slightly in the breeze from the doors. I steer the trolley so we don't pass directly under them. Keep an eye on the bird, which is a spreader of disease and has probably contaminated the food. The doctor said I needed to move on from my worry. He said you couldn't live life as if the worst was always about to happen. But it does happen. And when it happens, we send them into the ground with cuddly toys and photographs inside their little boxes. I saw it on EastEnders. There was a baby who died and they tucked it right in with a little blanket as if it was in bed. I found the episode on the internet and I watched it over and over again until whoever owned the site took it down. Pastel Stripe Henley Romper, cut out for all their capers. This romper is a must for growing girls. Finished in an all over stripe, the romper is detailed by a buttoned fastening Henley neck. Wear it on its own or with dungarees for a look that will last all day. If the next life is going to be just like this one, the sort of place where babies will still need soft toys and blankets and tucking in, where we will still need clothes and nappies, Dettol and things to do with head lice, then there's no great hurry to avoid it, is there? I didn't mention this to the doctor. I told him I would be good. I told him I would come to the supermarket. Kicker's kick fit infant rose and blossom leather boot. Brighten up her playtime in these mini kickers. Finished with a leather upper, the boots are detailed by contrasting overlay stitching, laces through the front, branded kickers tabs and a striking coloured sole, ensuring she looks good to head to toe for any occasion. Look at her. Still playing, very careful shopper and laughing, clapping her hands every time she sees me reach towards a shelf. She is delighted at all these things going into the trolley. Some children have tantrums in supermarkets, I could never allow that. The danger of her rising blood pressure, the fluttering of an immature heart ready to spasm, ready to break, weighing hardly more than a feather. We go slowly down an aisle of cereal and when she points to the brightly coloured boxes I rub her warm head and toss them in, chocolate covered frosted with free gifts and games and puzzles to complete, choking hazards, contamination, probably chock full of e-numbers, never mind the sugar. People might look in the trolley and judge me, but so what? She should have some sweet brightly coloured things. Treats. I started to worry about myself too. I stopped drinking. I avoided smokers. I only bought organic fruit and vegetables. My organs are precious. One day, this little girl was going to need a kidney, a lung, bone marrow, even a heart. I took up jogging in the early mornings because aerobic exercise is good for the circular, circulatory system. The doctor said it was a good idea but not to overdo it because I was thin enough already. He asked me if I was still taking the tablets. How ridiculous of him. I needed to keep my blood in fine, clean condition. She might fall holding scissors. 
How can I still talk my blood when it needs to be ready for the time that she will need it? As we come into the checkout, I am having difficulty steering the trolley. It's full, heaped up with all the things she'll need, but she's excited too because of the rack of chocolate and sweets positioned just to the side of her at reaching height. She's twisting in her seat and trying to grab them, looking at me with a reddened face, preparing to explode. The trolley is wobbling and I stop. I push the wheels with my foot to straighten it up. She shrieks. It's a noise that has always terrified me. I need to hurry. Any second now, she could suffer an embolism. It happens. To be a mother is unbearable. Introducing your new favourite companion, the Wiggly Pig. Part of the Pillow Pets range, this bedtime companion is made of high quality, super soft chenille, making this cuddly toy extremely versatile and cute. My heart starts beating fast as the man in front of us pulls out his wallet and pays for his shopping. The sweat is gathering at my hairline, dampening the small of my back. I've hit her before when she cries like that. I take my ring off first. I'd never break her skin, never give her a bruise. It's more of a sharp tap, really, to shock her into, si into silence. <laughs> that would have been good. <laughs> it's, for <laughs> it's for her own good. She screams again, pulling at the harness. Am I doing something? <coughs> Try not to take this personally. <laughs> she screams again, pulling at the harness that fastens her into the seat. If she fell through that, twisted herself. Where were we? Um, shocked into silence, pulling at the harness that fastens pulling at the harness that fastens her into the seat. If she fell through that, twisted herself out of it somehow, she could end up hanging herself. I wipe sweat out of my face with the palm of my hand and I never take my eyes off her. I've had enough. She's still reaching towards the sweets and because we're so near anyway and because I can't take any more, I give in. Kinder Surprise Egg, milk chocolate shell with milky white lining containing toy, mainly in kipped form, more milk, less cocoa. A company and aid in a child's growth and development. All Kinder Surprise toys are designed and developed with safety in mind, rigorously observing international regulations as well as extra safety criteria voluntarily adopted by the Ferrero Group. And she stops, just like that, stops with her mouth still open, staring at me. Other people are looking too because I can't stop. I carry on pushing things into the trolley, frantically, emptying the displays without really knowing what any of these things are. She's laughing, silly mummy. It's a dangerous, jangling sort of laugh, still tear-stained and throaty. So I tear open a chocolate bar with my teeth, push it into her fat, clutching hands. Her hair is damp under my palm, just for a moment, and I feel the ridges in her bird egg skull. The checkout girl tries to make conversation with us as I unload, pack the things into carrier bags and put them back in the trolley. I avoid her eye pay cash, tell her to put the change into the charity tin. She tucks because I am being rude, tucks because it's difficult to fit everything back into the trolley and I am pushing things down, squeezing everything in, still loading when she's trying to serve the next person. Oh, this is a good line. This is it. This is everything we need now. <laughs> This is it. 
This is everything we need now. We're all right, it's enough. I push the trolley through the checkout, park it against the community notice board and go. I don't look at it. I don't look at it and I leave her with the trolley, with all the things she will need. This loaded trolley is the only kind of note I can leave. Take care of yourself. Eat well. Enjoy treats. Walk your own path. Be good. Be happy. Please use bleach on the kitchen counters. No one shouts. No one follows me. I go through the sliding doors and out into the car park. There's a bus coming towards the stop at the far end. I run faster than I've ever run in my life. That's it. Thank you.